Okay, here I'm going to give away one of my favorite tricks. I'm going to talk about how to make vowel sounds with the EQ8 device. So what I've got set up here is just an operator patch I made with some white noise bursts. So we have a lot of texture to hear going through the filter. Hide that for now. So the way we're going to construct these vowels is I'm going to use a high-pass filter, three different peaks for each vowel, and then I'm going to have a low-pass filter on top. I'm going to take all the extreme highs and lows out of the way. So already you can hear that it's going to make a big difference. So each of our vowel sounds is going to have three peak bands. I've got a chart here that uh, I've constructed over the years. I'll be posting this on the forums at macprovideo.com in the Ableton section so that you guys can have this and get a little more scientific with it if you'd like to. So for my first vowel, which is aw, first peak is going to be 570 hertz, and it's a peak of 15 dB. I'm going to tighten up the Q all the way because I just want that one frequency. And the second peak is going to be at 840 hertz. Boost of 12 dB. And tighten up the Q again. Third peak is at 2410 hertz. That's a 6 dB boost. Tighten up the Q. So I think you might be surprised at how effective this quick curve is going to be at creating an aw vowel sound. And there we go. Now I'm going to group this into a rack. I'm going to this chain aw. And I am going to duplicate this to make a few more vowels, but first I want to map a few things so that uh, it'll save me some time. I'm going to map scale. Because what that allows us to do is scale back all of these peaks to be flat and bring it up to 100%, but of course, the one of the cool things about EQ8 is it can go up to 200%. Gives you a much more aggressive peak, but, um, you know, might be helpful at some point. And it's nice to be able to scale it back to zero. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm going to map is the chain selector. So that once I've got all my vowel sounds, I can switch between them. I'm gonna make some more vowels. I'm gonna make a er, oo. This one will be a, ah. and this one will be ah. And then I'm gonna make one more and call it dry. And that one's not going to have an EQ on it at all, but that's going to be my dry signal if I want to blend that in. And I'll map that to macro 5. I'm going to clean these up just to make it a little easier to look at. This is my dry control. Chain selector I'll call vowel selector. And map that zero to four. I'm 
don't want to get too deep into the chain selector explanation because we've covered that before, but okay, what's going on here? I'm going to have each one of these active at only one point in the chain. So the chain selector will switch between them. And then the dry channel I want to have active throughout. I'm going to control the volume of that separately. So let's make sure we've got the signal going all the right places. And that looks pretty good. Got the dry signal. Now I'm going to flash forward until after I've dialed in all of these other vowel sounds. Okay, let's hear it. We've got aw, er, oo, a, and ah. And that's pretty cool. And of course, we've got the dry signal if we wanted it. Um, might be a good time to abandon our white noise now that we've done all the science. I'm going to drag this over to a drum track. This vowel rack sounds good with drums, especially if you've got all the crash cymbals and open hi-hat stuff, because that's very similar to white noise. And that's pretty cool, I think. And here, maybe you want to use the dry a little bit. Scale it back. And you'll notice that in the lower left corner here, it does show me which chain is being activated by the chain selector. So that's pretty helpful. I'm going to drag this guy over to another drum track where we've got some glitchy Casio drums. I've got the bit reduction and down sampling cranked up quite a bit, so there's a lot of noisiness. Again, that, that feeds our vowel rack quite well. 